In the 20th century, the Menninger Foundation took an innovative approach to psychiatry. Dr. C.F., Will, and Carl Menninger changed the way that residents and interns were trained by emphasizing the technique of psychoanalysis. Such innovative methods altered the way in which patients were treated not only in America, but internationally as well. The innovative training methods and treatment of patients published in Dr. Carl's books had a positive impact on the field of psychiatry and the public perception of the mentally ill. Dr. C.F. is the father of Dr. Will and Dr. Carl. He was born in Topeka, which is why he chose to have the clinic there. In 1918, C.F. went to Rochester, Minnesota to attend an annual conference. While there, he saw what the Mayo brothers had done with their clinic. When he got back, he told Will and Carl that he wanted to build a clinic like the Mayos had. One year later, they started towards that goal. In 1919, Dr. C.F. and Carl Menninger founded the Menninger Foundation. In founding it, Dr. C.F. said, we had a vision of a better kind of medicine and a better kind of world. He was deeply committed to education and the best practices. At first, the Menninger Clinic was just that, a clinic. But by the end of 1925, Dr. Carl had rounded up enough investors to add a sanitarium. Before that, the Menninger Clinic was meant to just be a general practice facility. Dr. Carl was the one who influenced CF to turn the clinic into a sanitarium as well. Dr. Carl attributes his getting into psychiatry to one of his professors at Harvard. The main thing that Menninger did for psychiatry is that they, they put psychiatry into the medicine as part of the science of medicine. The Menningers believed in Freudian theory. Sigmund Freud, an Austrian neurologist, thought that psychoanalysis should be a more integral part of therapy. He also originally came up with the idea of the unconscious mind. Sigmund Freud is often referred to as the father of psychiatry. He learned from his patients, and at one point he had a patient who was describing what was going on, and as he was asking questions, he got the message, Dr. Freud, let me talk. Residents and interns were trained in psychoanalysis and other treatment methods at the Topeka State Hospital, the Veterans Administration, and at the Menninger facility. My residency training would focus on uh, psychotherapy and in a time where so much of the training is focused upon biological psychiatry, medications, and other things. Um, I, I really wanted to get a training that was very strong in the, um, the talk therapy. Right after World War II, many soldiers came back to the U.S. with post-traumatic stress disorder. At the time, Menninger's was one of the few places with psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysis came to be the most effective way of curing post-traumatic stress disorder. Before the innovative techniques used at the Menninger Foundation were implemented, patients were thought of as animals who couldn't be treated. The cat before Menninger, as far as I know, especially in my country, Guatemala, he was really for strange and weird, weird people who just needed to be calmed down and forgotten. I think that when I came here, I discovered another psychiatry, more scientifically and more human. Throughout the 1700s and 1800s, patients were chained naked to walls, beaten with rods, and lashed into obedience. French asylum director Philippe Pinel abolished the use of change in Paris's Salpetriere Institution in 1793. In their place, he instituted straitjackets and threatened patients who misbehaved with ten severe lashes. We all went on a tour to a state hospital to see how these crazy people act who are penned up in these big brick buildings that we medical students were led through the wards and we saw the poor people sitting in chairs, comfortable chairs and uncomfortable chairs, but just sitting, staring, and looking at us. We stared at them. And they were supposed to be unapproachable, useless for civilization, just to be kept there. Long rows of them. As far as I knew, 
That's all psychiatric patients did, was take walks on the grounds and sit in rows of chairs. Dr. Carl began publishing the case studies in medical journals and books related to the successful treatment methods used to rehabilitate patients at Menninger's. His ability to write uh, with, without uh, using jargon, I mean, you know, words that would be understood by people in the profession, he tried to use simple English to explain things, and in that way he was able to reach uh, a, a large, larger number of people to introduce them to what psychiatry was about. His publications led to national exposure in major news outlets, such as the New York Times. Menninger became known to the public as the prominent treatment facility in psychiatry. Experts from all over the world came to work at Menninger. Lots of people who were really major pioneers and leaders in the field were working at Menninger for many decades, and so it was a major center for psychoanalytic thinking and psychodynamic thinking. At the peak of Menninger's success, Dr. Will was featured on the cover of Time Magazine in 1948. His picture was on the cover of Time Magazine in 1948, and that put sort, of, sort of put psychiatry on the map. The article inside was all about the Benninger Foundation, about Dr. Will and Dr. Carl. In 1952, Dr. Charles Frederick Menninger passed away. Fourteen years later, in 1966, Dr. William C. Menninger passed away due to lymphoma. After the 1960s, Menningers began to decline. Due to more mental hospitals, fewer people wanting to spend large quantities of time at a hospital, and more choices for treatments. With the change in healthcare financing and the efforts to control the costs of healthcare by limiting the duration of hospitalization, it has profoundly affected the approach at Menninger because Menninger was consistently a place where effective treatment involved longer lengths of stay. Other criticism of Menninger included what some professionals identified as a limited approach in overemphasizing psychoanalysis. Currently, many psychiatrists and psychiatry training programs focus heavily on biological psychiatry, which is to take pills and meds for the problem. Research has shown that this does improve the success of the therapy, but some people think that a little bit of each is the most effective treatment. But you can't limit what you do today because that wouldn't cover the needs that we have to pay attention to for our patients. And so we actually talk about what's called a biopsychosocial model. And we very much believe in that. So you have to understand that there are genetic factors, there are biological factors, there are major sort of body contributions to psychiatric disorders and mental illness and we have to know about that and address it and sometimes give medications to help patients. A decade after Carl's death in 1990, Menninger recaptured the innovative spirit of its founders. It addressed its critics and responded to financial pressures by moving to Houston to affiliate with the premier research medical facility, the Baylor College of Medicine. The major advantage is the integration of first-rate science. Baylor is one of the top medical schools in the world in research in genetics. We take these discoveries in basic science and apply them to the care of the Menninger Clinic patients, and that's the key. In the 20th century, the Menninger Foundation took an innovative approach to psychiatry. Dr. C.F., Will, and Carl Menninger changed the way that residents and interns were trained by emphasizing the technique of psychoanalysis. Such innovative methods altered the way in which patients were treated not only in America, but internationally as well. The innovative training methods and treatment of patients published in Dr. Carl's books had a positive impact on the field of psychiatry and the public perception of the mentally ill. Thank you.